The Red Raiders landed one of the biggest fish in the transfer portal in JT Toppin. And in today's video, we'll discuss some possible lineup constructions with him both at the four and the five. Plus, we'll discuss the latest update when it comes to Texas Tech transfer portal target Jalen Wells and his decision to either stay in the NBA draft or return to school. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxwell here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on all things Texas Tech men's basketball, whether it's on the hardwood, in the portal, high school, recruiting trail, and everything in between. We've got you covered right here on the most engaging and, well, most subscribed to Texas Tech YouTube channel right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, let's jump into this, and we will start with the aforementioned Jalen Wells. He officially announced his decision on, well, Wednesday, May 29th, right before the deadline in terms of, hey, are you in or are you out when it comes to the NBA draft? And Jalen Wells, a target for the Red Raiders in the portal, has decided, drum roll please, to stay in the NBA draft and pursue his NBA dream. So congrats to him on that front. That's exciting news. Now, as for the Red Raiders side of it, I think we've talked about him plenty of times here on the channel in terms of his skill set and everything like that. But for those that may not know, he was a Texas Tech priority in the portal. And Austin Massey over at SBI is reporting that Tech actually felt really good about their chances in terms of if Jalen Wells was to go the college route, that he would be a Red Raider. But instead, he goes the NBA route. And Listen, you have Truly Donovan saying the same thing. I have been told the same thing in terms of, hey, if Jalen Wells did decide to come back to college, he would have probably gone to the 806, but instead he goes on to pursue his NBA dream, and, well, you can't hate a kid for that. So best of luck to Jalen Wells on that front. Now, the big, well, news for Texas Tech in terms of the Red Raiders landing a player in the portal was obviously JT Toppin. That was the talk of really the college basketball world on Tuesday. May 28th. And we have talked about him a ton on this channel. We're going to do a lot more so leading into the season, obviously, too. But let's take a look at the Texas Tech roster and what things look like with the addition of JT Toppin, because I mentioned it in his commitment video. He's an absolute game changer for the Red Raiders in the front court. So as you can see at the bottom of your screen, we've got some highlights here in terms of the Texas Tech roster and maybe what they could do moving forward. Now, two scholarships open. We know that. Expect Texas Tech to prioritize length with at least one of those. I think it wouldn't shock me if they added another young big to the mix here uh, because I think they view Ameli Elahu more as a four and a guy that can play some five minutes, but I think they like him a little bit more on the perimeter. He showed that he can shoot in his, well, time over in Europe with the under-18 squad over there, and he showed a little bit of it as a true freshman, but he was thrown into just a really difficult situation, if we're being honest about it, and now we're really going to get to see what Ameli brings. I think they view him more as a four. Now, when you look at the roster here in just a second, it could legitimately be 10 to 11 deep, and that is going to be highly necessary in 2024, 2025, because the Big 12, it's been a gauntlet in the past. No, 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 no. It's going to be way, way tougher in 2024, 2025, as John Rothstein is reporting that the Big 12 is set to have a 20-game schedule. Yeah, you heard that right. 20 games. Now, here's the thing. You might be thinking to yourself, RC, they played 18 in years past. What's the big deal? There's no bye week. There's no bye week now. Okay. In the past, you've had time where you've had, you know, six days off. You know, that's been, well, needed, if you're being honest. There will be no more bye weeks, at least according to John Rothstein, in the Big 12 schedule. You will play two Big 12 games, well, for 10 weeks straight leading up to Kansas City if you are a Big 12 team. And that is going to be highly necessary to have depth in Texas Tech. As we take a look at the roster uh, as of May 29th, you can see that at the bottom of your screen. You got D5, Chance McMillan, the aforementioned JT Toppin. You've got Kevin Overton, Federico Federico, Elijah Hawkins as well. Talk about a really, really good portal class for the Red Raiders. They went out and addressed some big needs, literally, in the front court and landed two guys that complement each other really, really well in JT Toppin and Federico Federico. And oh, by the way, they landed one of my favorite portal additions by any team across the country in Kevin Overton and, well, according to some people, the best passer in this portal cycle in Elijah Hawkins. Now, they did 
add two freshmen as well, Leon Horner, Christian Anderson, and then you've got some more returnees in Kerwin Walton, Devin Cambridge, Ameli Alahu, and then two walk-ons in Jack Francis and Jazz Henderson Jr. Again, two open scholarships as it stands right now for the Red Raiders. This is a rough estimate on a depth chart. And yes, you will see I put JT Toppin as a center because, again, it sounds like they want Yalahu at the four. You can flip those guys back and forth. It doesn't matter to me. But we talked about depth a little bit ago. Yeah, they, they've got it. You think about it. Elijah Hawkins, main point guard. You got a guy in Christian Anderson I think can play 10 minutes per game. He's that kind of player. You got Chance McMillan and Kevin Overton, a duo right there at the two spot that I really, really love and add a ton of versatility and really complement each other really well. You got D5, obviously, Kerwin Walton coming back. Kerwin Walton, one of the best shooters in all of college basketball. Devin Cambridge looks to be ahead of schedule in terms of his knee injury, already posting a ton of great content over on his social media platforms about his recovery and him doing dunks and getting workouts in. He's at the four spot right there. You got the aforementioned Ameli Yalahu, JT Toppin, and Federico Federico. Now, when it comes to my favorite lineup, of these guys and the ones that I'm probably most interested in watching this year in terms of if everybody's healthy and I want to see what they can do and one that I think probably gives Texas Tech the best opportunity to win. It's this one right here. Hawkins, Chance McMillan, D5, Devin Cambridge, and Top. Okay? This, this lineup right here is one that I think allows you to do a ton of things. First and foremost, you have Two really good shooters on the floor and Chance McMillan in D5, right? Like that's big. But the versatility that DC and also JT Toplin really present you in the front court for the Red Raiders cannot go unmentioned here. You can switch those guys back and forth. We saw what Devin Cambridge was like as the five in a small ball lineup for the Red Raiders. He was also shooting pretty well. JT Toplin. I expect his shooting percentage from deep to increase. I mean, he shot 34% as a freshman, albeit on relatively small sample size, right? But I expect it to be better going into his sophomore season. I really want to see what this can do in terms of this lineup. Again, Hawkins, arguably the best passer in college basketball. Two of the best shooters in college basketball and Chance McMillan in D5. One of the most versatile Swiss Army Knife type players in Devin Cambridge. And then JT Toppin, one of the more athletic players in all of college basketball. And a guy that will likely get better with his shot. I think there's a lot to like here in terms of the pick and roll. You got shooters on the floor, as I mentioned. They're... Still needs to be one more big in this rotation to make me feel comfortable in terms of the minute distribution. But overall, this roster has come together really nicely. And this is the lineup I'm most looking forward to seeing. Is it the best lineup for Texas Tech? I don't know. But it's the one that I'm most looking forward to watching because I think it adds a level of really what are you going to do if you're the defense, specifically in the pick and roll. And if you're a Texas Tech fan, you know how Grant McCaslin and crew Love to run a good pick and roll, and they've got two good screeners in there, really three in D5, DC, and Toppin, and I think you can space the floor out. It's one lineup that I'm watching, and we'll talk about a multitude of lineups here and videos on the channel here in the not-too-distant future, but this is the one that really, really stood out to me um, when it came to the JT Toppin edition and what the Red Raiders could do next year in 2024-2025. All right. That's going to wrap it up. Again, the highlights of today's video. Jalen Wells, a Texas Tech portal target, has decided to stay in the NBA draft. Well, best of luck to him. Hopefully he uh, gets drafted and has a great NBA career. No hard feelings if you're a Texas Tech fan on that front. Then we discussed JT Toppin, what the roster looks like, what Texas Tech could do with the final two scholarships. And, well, my favorite lineup, well, at least that I'm looking forward to watching next year for Texas Tech, which is Hawkins, Chance, D5, DC, and obviously JT Talkin. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to join the largest group and, well, the most interactive group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.